two clubs in the final are Bradford Northern and Widnes. The half-time score, Widnes 9, Bradford Northern 5. There were three tries in the first half and we can see them now. Widnes in the black shorts are playing from right to left and the commentator, Eddie Waring. Desperation, support, up, and the first try coming from David Redfern. Fifteen minutes gone, score five nil, and a little chip shot, hoping to get him for a try. And it's a try, a most unusual try. Bradford making the attack, it's something before half time would uh, be very useful, but it dropped the ball. I think it was dropping it to him, but Grace dropped it. And opened up a chance. Oh, a nice dummy by Malaspi. Will anybody catch him? Will he get tackled? He does get tackled. But the winger is up running after him. Bentley's running after him. And what a sensational try! Well, now we go live to the neutral ground at Swinton for this Premiership final. Second half should be starting at any moment. Confirmation of the half time score Bradford Northern 5, Widnes 9. And the commentator, of course, Eddie Wary. Well, thank you very much, David. I'm sure you would enjoy that. It was a tremendous try, and it gave a great atmosphere. Beautiful day, of course. So just summarise, in after four minutes, uh, David Redfern got a try 3-0. Mumby kicked the goal, making it 5-0. 5-3 to Alwell and Mick Burke getting the goal 5-5. Keith Alwell 5-6, and Keith Bentley 9-5. I think we might be able to see that last try, if we can. Here it comes. Just look at the, the mystery almost about this. This half dummy, Malaspi, slinging it there. Now then it was a question of the chase for the line. It was a question of also whether he could be cut off. But he keeps going and then gets the kick. And it was a question of the bounce, a bit of luck. Keith Bentley went down, the cover couldn't get fast enough to him. And he did the right thing, he dropped on it. A very close thing, but they were still talking about it at half time and the players now onto the field with the Bradford the team. I don't think they've got any changes. Mumby full back, McLean, Redfern, Parker, Gant, Stevenson, Redfern, the halves, and uh, Thompson, Bridges, Forsyth, Clarkson, Gratian, and Hale, and the halves, Ferris and Van Bellen. And there's no changes, I understand. The witness side, a team of many talents, Burke full back, Wright, George, Aspie Bentley, Eckersley Bowden, and the four with Shaw, Elwell, O'Neill, Gawley, Hull and Adams, Moran and Hogan, and the referee ready to go what should be a, a dramatic last 40 minutes, because what advantage there is in the wind, then he goes to Bradford, who are behind 9-5. Bentley almost to start him off where he left off. Linshaw, ex-Neath Rugby Union, this is the Slalom Lager Premiership final. Hold of Leeds, who last season beat Bradford Northern, 24 points to two. Oh, big good uh, Les Gawley getting out of a couple of tackles as the sun comes back. coming on to uh, well that kick was taken of course because it was the sixth tackle coming up and this is the uh, third consecutive season Bradford Northern have been in the final they won the trophy in 78 beating witness 17 8 and losing last season to lead which I've told you 24-2 remarkable comeback because in about 1964-65 there was no rugby league in Bradford but now there's a successful period they've just got to get out of uh, this little bit of early start to the second half which isn't quite what they'd like to be up in their opponent's half Australia and New Zealand uh, taking this final a lot of interest of course uh, New Zealand now coming to uh, Britain next uh, winter, next season not necessarily winter Halfway line, Jeff Clarkson. Well, see what the wind does, if anything. But it goes out of play. A couple of shots in the first half, 
and he went out of play just on the corner flag. Uh, Bradford and uh, Witness have met three times this season in the jump fair final. Bradford six, Witness nil. Tried to Derek Parter and uh, Mumby. And in the first... Witness, Bradford Northern, 10-11. Uh, well, I'll get you up to date with the movements of the two teams in progress. Let's go, Ollie. Dummy half, man behind the man playing the ball, Keith Elwell. Knock on, scrum down. Scrums, those of you who like statistics, 5 7 in favour of Witness, and penalties 5 3 in favour of Bradford. Mean an awful lot, but it, it, people are pleased times to some keep records of this. And record at the moment Witness 9, Bradford Northern 5. Both. Halfway line. Mike O'Neill. Jeff Grayson. And the second half pace is not going to let up at all. Sun has got in, which is surprising in view of all the sun we're having in England at the moment. Keith Mumby. Quite a lot of these players are well known, of course, in uh, having played in Australia. There is Keith Mumby. Looking around. And Keith Bridges. Just gets as many yards as he can. He gets five, I will reckon. I'll give him five there. See what the next, the second tackle comes. What comes off it? Get in possession and position. Jimmy Thompson. Another four yards. Get near to the post. Working a set piece. But he can't get his pass in. He has done. Got his pass in the overlap. Might be an opening here for Parker. Oh, and giving it out to... Uh, Keith Bentley, and he's lost it. Well, he was, he was offside. Penalty to witness. I think putting the ball out of his hand. So only five, five minutes gone, and pulling the ball out of his hand, penalty. That was very good of uh, Philip Thompson. No relation to Jimmy Thompson. Good crowd. Swinton ground. Home of many great matches in their earlier years. That was the one that I talked about, Chimpy Bush. Payne is scored and not given. And the test match there was nil-nil. And England went to Rochdale and won three points to nil. That'll revive memory to a number of people who have been followers for a long while. This is set up for pace, and what a uh, Mike Nelly, Mike O'Neill is having quite a job to be uh, kept in. He had two vital tries against Leeds in the second leg of the semi final. A good pass and well taken. A little, it was a knock on, but I wonder whether Billy Thompson was a little quick in saying it was a knock on, but it, it was. So one can't query that one. Score nine points to five. Two tries to one. Good goal, Bradford, important one, Stevenson. And a high tackle, and the referee uh, talking to Mick George, being attended to Nigel Stevenson. Explaining what it was, I think it was pretty clear what it was. We'll just see this, it was a high tackle, it comes across. Now this is the moment. Well, there it is, and that's the offence, Mick George, and the kick in to get uh, position. 
Big crowd here, still uh, enjoying not only the sunshine but the football. Nine points to five. Witness, coach Dougie Lawton, Bradford Northern coach Peter Fox, both experienced footballers. 25 yards line, the sun comes back, number 13, Gary Hale. Well, that's one way to get him over the 25 yards line. That's what he's going to do with it when they've got him there. Time alone will tell. Colin Forsyth. And the crowd are loving it. The crowd are really enjoying this last match of the season with a lot of verb. And a chance for a breakthrough here. He's left the ball behind him. And he's gone back. Uh, Jason dropped it. But George, Mick George went back and saved it. The let off. Two to one with a cover. That one and will take it on. Keith Bentley stops and comes inside, gets his passing. And still the pace is being maintained with a remarkably consistent and persistent effort by both teams keeping ball moving. Not seen much of right, but he's a player that can get out of the clutch at any time. Probably the fastest man, Fred Bowden. And there's David Hull. And witness having come about 70 yards and a, a knock on and a drop pass. Well, that was remarkable. Persistence, strength, and everything that one expects of good footballers. Good ball. Hello, Redford. Lively little scrum half, Redfern, always working, a brother to David Redfern, who recently tallied up 200 tries. Bradford uh, physio is more in action, and on the witness side might have been an interception there. I reckon Mick Jones is just a bit hesitant, deliberately. Running may not be as fast in this half, but certainly the physical strength and the skill of the two teams will always be evident. Nine points to five. Trying to go to Bradford, that would be in front. A nice dummy. Keith Bridges. Well, there's the recovery position. And scum down. And Billy Thompson is uh, not bothering very much about it. With ten minutes gone. Keith Bridges down and he's going on to see what's the matter. Billy Thompson stopped the clock. Uh, possibly might have gone across sooner. Ron Barrett dealing with the injured player. Quite an experienced footballer, Keith Bridges and Billy Thompson. There's the timekeeper, sounds the own at new innovation this last few years. Well, he's up and away, and he being Keith Bridges, and he's the man to get the scrums. In fact, uh, he's just one behind 8 7. And the advantage, but he never went in, that's for sure. Stuart Wright. David Hill. I don't think this pace, other than in the running department, will be lessened at all. Well, hey, <laughs> that's lovely. He passed to himself. Not the only time I've seen that happen, but by God, it's rare. Had a chance for a witness, David Eckersley. Witness just showing a bit of strength at the moment, a bit of persistent attack. Bradford rather knocked out with a try, nearly on a, on a half time. No stretch, no letting it bounce, but he did well, did the boy. Only a youngster. Uh, 
Well, it's a bit of hard matches, this, and it's not going to let up. The black and white for Witness, and the red, amber, and black for Bradford. Oh, in the mid 50s, had, uh, had no, no red league club in the, in the city, but they came and were reformed, and have since gone great places indeed. We've got a sub, Van Bellen, and Jack, Jeff Clarkson, 11 is coming off, Van Bellen is coming off. <laughs> The score, that for Northern 5, witness 9. Thirteen minutes gone in the second half, 9-5, and possession. Put one one out. Mumby coming up and joining. Not the fastest fullback in the business, but he can go. David Redfern, over 200 tries. And the crowd applauding good, sporting crowds. Yes, four points the margin. Van Bellen gets into the game quickly. Keeping possession. Got to have a set-piece move, but it's not. It's Gary Hale going near to the corner. About 10 yards or so. Bradford now putting on the attack. Putting on pressure, turning it the other way. What do you make it? Three or four yards out. David Redfern, there's the corner flag. Middle of the picture. A little kick on it. Not come off. Gary Hale tried the little kick. It didn't come off. 25 yards line, just on the right. See how much, how far they'll make it. This is the first one. Countdown. We'll have one. And they'll cross the, uh, the 25 yard line with this. Two of them pushed McAdams up. Oh, and away they go, McAdams. Still going, looking for a faster man. With a bit. Not quite evident where the support was coming from, but he kept the ball and made progress. Witness now on the attack. Score nine points to five. Glyn Shaw. Got a Bradford player out. Good pass to Eckersley, there's going to be some damage here to right. Going to be taken on in the corner, but he didn't have enough room to get round. And Gant measured him and put him over the line without a lot of trouble. Fifteen minutes gone and the pace has been held and I reckon with this score it will be. But ball possession now is going to be very important. We've got an injured player across on the far side. It's Ian McLean, the Ron Barrett using the magic sponge on him and with him. And a penalty, and a relief penalty to Bradford Northern. Great. Bradford. Northern got to make the distance the other way, but it's noticeable now. Every tackle has got about three fellows around the defender. <laughs> 25 yards line. And the sun very heavy. And it looked to me as if one or two players were not very keen about uh, having the ball well taken. Well, it still got it. At least it's end to end stuff. And we've got a step coming on for us for McLean. Looking for the break, looking for the support. Support comes, but not quick enough. Gary Hale having quite a good match. Back for Northern coming back on, and we've got a step coming on right in front of the main stand. 14 is Stevie Ferris, and two is McLean. Thank you. 
Oh, there's a bird's eye view. That's the right expression of the three front rows, and there's McLean uh, going off. At a puts him injured wrist. Nice dummy. Standing side. Well, the experience and craft of witness is quite evident. With Bradford having told very hard and a bit unlucky with the try just before then, but it was such a brilliant try that both teams acknowledge it, both sides and supporters did. Billy Thompson is not at all pleased with that and demonstrates his reasoning for giving the penalty for kicking against Brett Jeff Grayson and the victim David Hull, number 12. So the, the feeling is very evident. Well, this is a hard match. It's a hard cup tie. And it's a match that uh, experience in the end will possibly count, but both sides have a lot of experience, so one uh, cancels out the other. Been no score this half. Mike O'Neill. Clinshaw. Getting towards the flash point, the danger point, midway through the second half. We will be shortly working their pet moves along with Mick Adams. break, beautiful sidestep, Eckerlin out to right, he must be in, is he in? I don't know, he's got to have what the touch just said, and the touch just seems to say yes, and it's a try to Stuart Wright, he was bang on the corner flag, they've been to two, one or two players going up to the touch judge, and pointing out, let's have a look at it, here it comes, Eckersley was making it, this is the moment, a lot of the argument about this try, let's have a look at it when it comes over here, now this is the point, he takes the ball all right. Does he go over the white line on the right? Does he get his foot into touch before? What happens? Well, you need to see that a lot of time. And you need a judge and jury for it. But it's uh, on the board. And there's the scorer. And it's 12 points to 5. And 20 minutes gone, 20 to go. And a real killer of a try. Well, that's a try that will be talked about. Three tries to one at this moment for witness. Mick Burke. It was Stuart Wright's 18th try of the season. So I, I reckon it will be the most controversial one. Burke, 10 tries before today, 125 goals. One drop goal. Yeah, will it will come right across, it does, but comes across the front. 12-5 it remains. And the crowd buzzing with controversy. 20 minutes gone. Witness 12 brought the Northern 5 in the Premiership final for the Slalom Lager Trophy and First Division champions Bradford and Witness First Division runners up. So you've had what well, one could regard as the best of all today. Strongly now, Mike O'Neill. There could be a problem here for Bradford. He sort of held it down by shorts. But witness now very strong on attack and going easily in Malaspe. 
That's broken the back of this match, I would think, at 15 points to 5. 18 minutes to go and a very disheartened Bradford side. But it was a lot of movement that got into their opponent's half and a nice bit of a Mike O'Neill pushing the ball out till they eventually go into the wing, Amal Aspe. In the no doubt about whether it went over with the foot on that one. See if his luck will change in the goal kicking department on the other side. Two tries in three minutes for witness and the chance for two points to be added with a kick by Burke. No go. Two teams, Rufford and Witness, I believe I've said it, but they've met three times this season in the jump play final, 6-0, and in the first division, 10-11, to 11, and in the other score from that competition, Bradford Northern 5, Witness 21. Still right. Well, the reception committee was clearly staying uh, in in come Pulsift running now Pinshaw Bowden and of course it's a joy to be running for witness on that plan with a score 15-5 but I'm sure Bradford will not give in half a dummy I wouldn't call it a, a real dummy Ten yards short of the halfway line, there it is. Running with strength and vigor. A little and they kick and it might bite round. It doesn't. No, but they're getting out of trouble, Mick George. And still going, still supported play. And do it right. Well, they wouldn't. A lot of movement there, there's about half a dozen or more players touched the ball and there was twice when it looked at the witness we're going to get clean through but Bradford will not get in but they're chasing now a pretty side of score 15-5 15 minutes to go Scrambled have been about equal all the afternoon, 9-8 at this moment Still time for Bradford, pull this game out of the fire. David Redfern running well, he needs some inspiration. Hang at his passing, a good piece of tackling there by Gawley. Uh, he held his hands that he couldn't really get the pass in. Colin Forsyth, halfway line. Stevenson trying to make it run, is not in touch, still a drive, and a good tackle, by his opposite. Twenty-five yards line. And the face is still quite surprisingly hostile on both sides. Not, not quite as fast from the Bradford side because they're having to do a lot of defending. And it's usually two or three to one on the tackle now. Certainly there's been a lot of movement, certainly end-to-end -end stuff. Certainly 25 to 25 stuff. Roger Bono, Keith Bentley, quite a classy winger. 
and the swagger. Well, uh, I'm sure the players not having uh, been used to the sort of weather we've got here this afternoon are feeling it uh, with a vengeance. So Keith Bentley, a player of the future without any doubt, 26 tries this season, not including one uh, just before half time, and a vital try that was indeed. Scoring it at that moment was very important. Well, witness be the challenge cup holders, Oakingston Rovers, in the first round 2010. They lost the first leg of the semi at Leeds, uh, but went on to knock out the deficit and went through by one point. Quite goal in for Leeds, no doubt, but very happy for witness. Well, the crowd have stayed in the beautiful sunshine to see this very mobile rugby league final. And Mr. Barrett has been very busy for Bradford. Hey, George. Been play on, possibly a little parcel obstruction, but the referee said play on. Did very well, did that young Van Ballen. the ball pitch from him by Reggie Bowden. Well, that was an interesting thing. I, uh, he, he, he took the ball. Jimmy Thompson was probably going to play it. However, the referee said what he did was wrong. And knowing what a crafty little fella he is, uh, I wouldn't dare to suggest one way or the other. Mumbi. Now let's have a look at this one. Now he pulls the ball while right? another man takes the tackle. Well, you can argue about that for a long while, I would imagine. It'll certainly be a talking point for uh, the uh, volatile Mr. Bowden and the club tonight in witness. Oh, well taken. Every Billy Thompson is staying put, not getting away from the uh, rather heavy front row forwards, moves in quickly, keeps the defending players back. Ten minutes to go, but a feeling coming into it, there's the situation, it's an awkward one, but a big boy to take it, Mick Burke, and still runs. Giving a damage and then getting the pass in. The port in play comes up for it again. Beautiful football. Keith Bentley and yet again. And yet again from the fullback who started it all. And at the last drop he dropped it. Well, what a marvellous piece of rugby league. If we could finish on that note at the end of the season. Such glorious rugby league is being played in this heat and the crowd dearly well this is how it started and the winger taking it <laughs> and the ball eventually going out to the winger getting the ball inside which had he taken it would have been a try but he didn't take it Colin Forsyth coming off and Clarkson comes on for him and nine minutes to go well if Bradford Northern stand up to the end of the match with this onslaught it'll be great credit to them but the powerhouse up front Lynch on this occasion an overlap a dummy, I reckon the dummy was coming because the defenders were staying with Stuart Wright. 
Will the try be scored? Well, you're going to see. Big tackle coming up. Maybe, maybe. Not maybe. It, no, it isn't. Well, he didn't ground it properly. It can only be that. It wasn't over. Well, let's have a look at this one. It was a real cheek here, so called in. Um, well, he was tackled before he got over the try line. Possession again. For this time, for Brad. Bradford North contributed so much to this match. But the might of witness being ever so dominant in a match with two tries in the second half, 9-5 at half time, 15-5 now. Mal Aspie has been awarded the Harry Sunderland man of the match. Number four, Mal Aspie, there he is. minutes plus injury time can Bradford now just save one try they've got one can they get one more just a bit of feeling going on now those of you who just uh, want to know this situation the state of the poll people have changed Gary Hale has gone on the wing Ferris to scrum half and Alan Redfern to lose forward well, quite a bit of a change about on the northern Bradford northern side Well, Bradford has come a long way since their day. The don't seem pigs, and they've contributed to this match. Witness having a drop a goal and a drop goal by David Eckersley just to add one more point 16 points to five and here it comes with all these in the world 25 yards one sails away and puts another point on the scoreboard for a drop one point these days well, we've got a Hogan coming on, Brian Hogan coming on for David Hull. Five minutes to go. Bedford Northern five, witness 16. Not a knock on, just in case anybody thinks it might be. <laughs> getting in the picture very quickly and giving somebody a dirty look and we've got a Bradford player injured Jimmy Thompson might have gone for the interception but didn't Mick Adams Jimmy Thompson being attended to by Ron Barrett Let him play the ball, he says. Four minutes, well taken. Couldn't do very much more, I'll admit. Let's go on. Whoa. Well, I hope it doesn't end in any trouble, obviously. The feeling is there, due to a number of reasons, and uh, Hogan and Gratian. So it's, it's finishing on a, uh, well, I was going to say a grand stun note, but I probably wouldn't be right. Steve Farris.
winner's ball. 16 points to 5. Getting near to the end of this match. Been a bit of injury time. Two and a half minutes, in fact. Um, Mr. Barrow in to report somebody. Keith Bridget, in fact. And I would think it would be a good idea to uh, have a long distance kick at the uh, temples, if any, cool down. Shaw. Is he going to have a drop? No, he's not the, the working man to do it. Turning back inside and he'll go over like a bomb. Will Les Gawley really go on? And he found the opening. One or two players were doing other things and Les Gawley shot through to make the score 19 points. The strength of him galloping into the opening. And over he goes, moving away from the post a little. But what a dramatic match this has been. Five tries to one. Witness five tries. Burke the kick. He should kick this one. Well, no comments. Attendance, 10,000. Well, the goal kicking hasn't been one of the highlights of this match, and uh, it, uh, nothing in penalty-wise has taken any shots. So, just one for Burke and one for Mumbai. And the rest have been... Six tries. One, two, three, six tries. Five to one. We're into injury time. But uh, gone the wrong player, so far as the pass was intended. So as we go into injury time, quite a bit of injury time, but the one minute, in fact. Well, there's the timekeepers with the watches. Are we going to have a are we going to have a, a grandstand finish? Or will the score remain a 19-5, which is the score now? And a nice kick, an up and under, a little bit of change if he doesn't take it, but he does. Well covered. Mick Burke, player of the future without any doubt. Whatever position I'm not sure he'll finish as, but certainly he's a great footballer. That fair do. Started well, got a try, and then how oh well leveled. And then it was a try that made an awful lot of difference was the one near half time, which made the score nine points to five. And there it is. Whoa! 19 points to five as the fans come on. the uh, 
Uh, presentation will be made by Mr. Miles Eastwood, Managing Director of Brown and Company. And the winners, well, we've given you the Harry Sandler Memorial Trophy. So as the players run onto the field, we come to the end of a rugby league season that has had a lot and grandstand has been there on most of the occasions when it has happened and we talk about it and this is the trophy that is to be presented the premiership final and now come the teams to receive the trophy finished on a, a rather Maybe weather can stand possibly with the on the field, the varying things happening, but these those will all be forgotten in both camps tonight as they look forward to uh, a few weeks before they then back on the fold of regularly. Thanks for all the things we've heard from you. Uh, David Oxford and Rage Bowden receiving uh, the cup, showing it to all concerned and then doubt on behalf of witness a very very happy man so from Swinton we turn you to uh, David Coleman in the warm studio in London not as warm as those players are Commentator was Eddie Waring of course and television presentation was by Keith Phillips